Hello, everyone. Uh, we are switching gears, so from all these amazing roads and the landscapes that we saw earlier, we're moving to roads uh, at sea. Sometimes it's really boring, uh, only blue, quiet, yeah, nothing, and suddenly it can become white and blue and rough, you know, so it's not boring anymore. Uh, so I'm, I'm here today to present our developing effort on creating a road network at sea. The, the idea, the scope of this project is that we support the efforts of these guys, the professional mariners, in navigating uh, safely their vessel from the port of destination to the, uh, from the port of departure to the port of destination. And the reason, of course, is that we try, that they try to avoid uh, collisions or any other maritime incidents that can result in uh, loss of life and, of course, environmental disasters such as this one. Beginning with some background information, over 80% of the world's trade is carried by sea, as it is by far the most cost-effective mode of transport to move goods and raw materials from uh, one port to another. The global fleet numbers over 53,000 merchant vessels, and in terms of smaller boats, uh, we have over 4.6 million and uh, 17 million fishing and recreational boats, uh, respectively, in the U.S. alone. We also have thousands, uh, thousands of ports worldwide that serve uh, the millions of smaller and larger uh, vessels. In the U.S. alone, there are over 25,000 uh, ports, including the smaller ones. To plan and execute their voyage, mariners use nautical charts that contain all the navigationally significant uh, information of the marine and coastal environments, such as depths, of course, uh, the coastline, uh, dangerous navigation, such as wrecks and rocks, or aids navigation, such as uh, buoys, lights, anchorages, and others. On the uh, top, we have a paper nautical chart, and the bottom is the equivalent uh, electronic navigational chart, which is a database that is loaded on uh, dedicated seaborne systems uh, similar to those we have for our car navigation. Apparently, there are no roads at sea, as we said, uh, in the sense of those on land. You can be as creative as you want. You can follow the Great Circle. You can follow the uh, Loxodrome. It doesn't make sense. Certainly, this doesn't make sense if you drink a lot, probably. <laughs> or you can be very creative, if you like. But <laughs> practice, practice has showed, yeah, that uh, mariners are boring. So they tend to follow previously used routes as a good practice and to ensure safety. And uh, looking at this traffic density map, we can see that, indeed, there are roads at sea. So what? Uh, what we're doing here is we're, uh, how, how we see this traffic density map is we're using uh, AIS data, the automatic identification syst uh, system data, that's, that it's data that all vessels transmit every two or three or ten seconds or up to three minutes depending on the uh, condition. Uh, that includes the SIP characteristics such as unique ID name, uh, SIP type, draft, length, width, and uh, route information, uh, position, speed, heading, course over ground port of destination and navigational status such as a tank or underweight uh, using engines. Uh, and not all of, all of that information is mandatory, uh, which, is, which is a problem. And this is why we're trying to develop this road network. In the context of our overarching uh, project, we process historic IAS data, port locations, and other relevant chart information and other information such as weather to create the roads of the sea network towards a route suggestion and a route prediction system, as we call them. For in regarding the route suggestion system, a maritime accident reports have shown that uh, ships are at higher risk of grounding when they take a route for the first time or are to stray for the implant route. So as I said, we follow ro roads, but uh, if there's a weather event or something, we can change uh, our planned path. And this is when we're at higher, higher uh, risk of uh, grounding. Uh, the suggestion system is expected to alleviate this risk with proposing a route safe for the specific vessel characteristics. It's different if it is a cargo of 15 meters or if it is a small uh, recreational boat of one meter draft. So we're proposing different safe routes for the specific vessel characteristics. Regarding the route prediction system, which is the focus of this presentation generally, it aims to alleviate the risk of collision when ships navigate near other ships and especially in areas of uh, high traffic. Uh, so the concept is that if we have this road network, and let's say we have subsequent uh, locations, one, two, three, of a nearby vessel, we could predict that 99% this vessel would continue until this 
waypoint, and then 70% would follow this uh, direction, and then 20% that, and 10% somewhere else. Predicting other vessel trajectories is one of the main and most mentally demanding tasks uh, that mariners are called to perform. Here, here's an example of various ships, different ship types, uh, north of the Strait of Dover. It is really challenging for someone to predict where these, all these vessels are headed. You need to track their movement. Of course, we have some systems on, the, on board, but not, yeah, it's only predicting the near time, like uh, following the last two, three movements, but the ship can move all the time to avoid other targets, so uh, it's not so sophisticated. Uh, and uh, if we have this uh, traffic density map, it becomes clear that you can uh, better anticipate where these vessels are headed. To extract the roads from AIS data, our initial solution uh, included a grid-based uh, approach. This is an example in the New England area, and this is one in the Lake Huron, where brighter colors, of course, denote higher uh, traffic density. And this is an example of our uh, initial efforts for path fighting uh, approach, going from my home place, uh, Portsmouth, New Hampshire, to Boston using an A-star. Of course, again, don't judge that. It was We were mostly playing with the data, cleaning data, becoming, becoming familiar with the data. But uh, from uh, day one, we knew that the way forward is a weighted directed graph, uh, vector graph. So currently, after cleaning and pre-processing all the millions of historic AAS data, we select two ports, say uh, Piraeus in Greece to Valencia, Spain, and we reconstruct all the trajectories using the AIS information. Then we uh, discard uh, outlier trajectories, meaning trajectories with very few points, such as this one, as you can see, going over land and everything. So probably they had their system closed or it, uh, it failed or whatever, or uh, trajectories that took too long. Uh, and of course, based on the statistics of all the data that we have, then we select a baseline trajectory for now is the one of least travel time and we move across uh, this uh, baseline, meaning from every two consecutive points, every three-line segment voyage leg, leg, let's say, we uh, cluster all the AIS points on, uh, near this uh, trajectory. And we maintain, we keep the, um, the middle cluster. So here we have three clusters, and we keep only the middle cluster. And we move along the baseline, as I said. We combine all these polygons into one big corridor, and then uh, within this corridor, we select the real trajectory, the actual trajectory that is closer spatially to the median line of this corridor. This example shows uh, how, uh, how this works, the process. So here, let's say the red one is the first trajectory we used, and all the small polygons, the yellow now, yeah. They create uh, one corridor, then we move to the next uh, trajectory, we find the next trajectory, it's that, and so on and so forth until we cover the entire data set. But for instance, here, this main trajectory can be 60% of the maritime traffic for a specific type, type uh, ship type. And this can be 30%, and all the others can be five, two, one, maybe just one single trajectory, which will be uh, rejected in the end. And uh, this is from Piraeus in Greece to the wonderful island of Santorini. Maybe you have seen pictures of this amazing stunning views, but also to me this is also amazing where the port is, here's the port. So if you wanna get up there and take all these wonderful pictures, you need to take this road. It looks scary, it is scary, <laughs> but it's safe. So, But there's an airport as well, so if you want it. Uh, in the end, we, uh, we have the polygons, the polygon corridors, as I said, and the representative trajectories. And uh, these are attributed with information about the draft of the vessel and the count how many vessels uh, follow this, uh, use this trajectory. For instance, the main corridor here uh, is the dominant, clearly for vessels of draft greater than 16 meters. So if you have a vessel uh, that gets to this point and the draft is, say, 18 meters, it's most likely will follow this path uh, instead of this or that, less likely. Furthermore, to confirm the safety of the corridors, we, uh, for the different draft vessels again, and annotate the uh, corridors, we evaluate them against uh, the chart data. So uh, the goal is to find potential dangers that were lost due to the resolution of uh, the corridor or the aggregation of AIS points into a corridor. This is an example of the extracted corridor, the main and the alternative from Boston to New York. 
And using this example, how the root prediction works, we uh, first take the given vessel's uh, locations, and let's say that our uh, shape of interest is somewhere here. And these are the first, second, third location, and we compute the fretted distance they, we compute the fretted distance of this trajectory to the existing roads. Uh, this is to match the trajectory of these locations, of the three subsequent, uh, subsequent locations, into one of our roads. And one we, once we do that, we project these points to the uh, found road. Next, we uh, interpolate its movement to the next uh, intersection. And from there, we co query the database to determine the probability for the vessel to travel in each of these directions, let's say 80%, 13%, and 7%. And we continue, we repeat this process until we find, until we get to the possible different uh, ports of destination. Of course, once you move from this point, the probability drops significantly. But frankly, uh, for the end user, for the mariner, they don't care. They don't care if this vessel here goes to Boston or goes to France, Spain, Africa, Australia, wherever, name it. They don't care. What they do care about is, uh, my vessel is here. Am I going to be affected by this one? Where is this one is headed for now? Uh, so if, if I know wh what is the next waypoint and what is the, probably, uh, the, prob uh, the probable direction heading of this vessel after that, to me it's more than enough. If, if I go near this vessel and uh, at this point when they get to this intersection, I'm near them, yeah, I need to know again where this is headed. But what is the final destination? Nobody really cares. And this is how we move from this to the next intersection and so on and so forth, as I said. And this is an example going back from Boston to New York. These are the initial AIS uh, information, the vessel information, the black ones, projected to the uh, nearest, not nearest, the most similar road, nearest, more similar, which are the blue points. And these are the subsequent, uh, subsequent AIS points. Here is our first uh, prediction of, intersect of the next point of intersection. And this is the final uh, point we predict, and yeah. But again, the road network here, it's, it, was, it is for demonstration only. It's really poor. It's not complex. Now, besides uh, suggesting uh, safe routes and predicting how the other vessels are moving, uh, main, main goal of main application is the autonomous vessels, the, the, uh, the efforts for automation in the maritime domain. Humans can predict. Otherwise, we would have thousands of maritime incidents every year. So humans can predict generally how ships are moving, but still we have incidents. But robots, it's, it becomes really difficult for them to uh, predict where others are going. So one thing is that. Others is we may have uh, a silo somewhere in the chart showing 10 meters, let's say, but still we have uh, vessels of 15 meters going over it. Clearly, something is wrong with our chart. So chart adequacy and where we need to resurvey or identify maritime incidents. For instance, this vessel, vessel started from Greece going to Italy. And following this road, suddenly they turned uh, northwards and the vessel went there. Why? Uh, early warning, there was a fire incident. In terms of future work, everything is future work. So yeah, <laughs> don't ask me future work. <laughs> So I'm moving to the next one, which is thank you for your attention if you have any questions. <laughs>